This next presenter, this is going to take me a minute because there's so much I have to explain. She is truly a winner of epic proportions, an investigative filmmaker. Amy Ziering's work has earned two Oscar nominations, 12 Emmy nominations, two Emmy Awards, a Peabody, a Grammy, an Independent Spirit Award, as well as two podcasting Webbies, and the highest accolades in the field of investigative journalism, both the Polk and the Columbia DuPont. That's pretty impressive. Okay, but more than that, this is the best compliment ever. She's been called the Nancy Pelosi of the documentary world. A title well earned, and she doesn't just make films, she makes history. Her 2012 Oscar-nominated film, The Invisible War, led to five congressional hearings, the passing of 36 pieces of legislation, culminating in the passage just last year of the MG, MJIA in Congress, the first in decades to mandate a change in military policy so that assault survivors now can have access to an impartial adjudication process. That's a big, big, big deal. That film, The Invisible War, led college students to implore Ziering to make The Hunting Ground, a piercing expose of assault on campuses. And both of these films helped herald in what we now know as the Me Too movement. Finally, with women in the entertainment industry and around the globe feeling inspired to themselves come out and speak up after, her, after having watched her work. Ziering also more recently directed the Allen vs. Pharaoh, Not So Pretty, an expose of the cosmetics industry, and On the Record. And if you haven't seen them, go check them out on HBO Max. They are not only tour de forces cinematically, but important and enlightening. So it is my pleasure to welcome maverick, game changer, and world-class filmmaker, Amy Ziering, up to the stage. a slacker. Okay. I cannot wait to gush to all of you about the remarkable Regina Scully. <laughs> but, so you don't have to just take my word for it, we're going to see about how remarkable she is. Let's hear from what some others have to say about her first. These films are a labor of love, and I think that we can change and do anything in this world when we are fiercely compassionate. I'm so excited that my dear friend and sister, Regina Kulik Scully, is being honored with the Humanitarian Honorary Tribute at the 25th Women's Image Awards. My film partnership with Regina began over a decade ago with my first documentary, Misrepresentation. The media is the message and the messenger and increasingly a powerful one. In a world of a million channels, people try to do more shocking and shocking things to break through the clutter. They resort to violent images or sexually offensive images or demeaning images. The impact wouldn't be possible without Regina. Every film of mine since, she's been the first in, the boldest, the most fierce supporter. She's a legend. She's already invested tens of millions in 200 documentaries, giving a voice to female and other independent filmmakers. Regina is an exemplary human being, first and foremost. She has been so supportive of so many worthy projects through the years. We first worked together on a documentary film called Fed Up. The sugar industry is extraordinarily powerful. They're in business to make money, not to keep America healthy. She has enriched my life immeasurably. She is a woman of exceptional taste of exceptional generosity and exceptional kindness. They didn't want black people to come and swim in their swimming pools. My being on the program was a statement for Fred. I'm not feeling blue right now, though. Me neither. <laughs> Fred Rogers taught generations of Americans how to find their way through the world with grace and love and kindness. And Regina Scully follows closely in that tradition. Love is at the root of everything. All learning, all relationships, love or the lack of it. I would not be a filmmaker today if it weren't for Regina Scully. 
Regina started supporting my work very early in my career. She was the executive producer of my feature documentary, The Departure, which is about a punk rocker turned priest who helps inspire people to keep living. Yeah. It was a film that uh, centered on a lot of themes Regina has devoted her, her whole career to. I'm so proud of you and I'm so honored to be walking this path with you to heal trauma in the world. And our last film, Cracked Up, the Daryl Hammond story, did just that. You're an alcoholic, you're a drug addict. Oh, and by the way, surprise, surprise, you have trauma. Something's happening in this house. I can't protect myself. You're an adult. Do something. You're the greatest cheerleader because you understand that love is what makes people rise. They kept asking me, what were you wearing? He told me we shouldn't go out in short skirts and we shouldn't drink because, I mean, that's our fault. During the uh, rape investigation, they made it very, very clear if I said anything, they were going to kill me. You would think that because the military is about protecting our country, that certainly they would want to protect their own. I just want to tell everybody out there that Regina has helped thousands of filmmakers and has supported hundreds of films. And nobody is regarded with more respect and love in this industry than our Regina. And you so deserve this award. We're all here to support you. It's been an honor to be able to have Regina Scully in my life. She was the first one to support Fantastic Fungi. This magical ancestor gave us life, connects us all. She's a fierce, compassionate warrior to want to bring beauty, love, and healing to the planet. We need these mushrooms. We work together as a community to solve problems. You certainly have shown the field of filmmakers, especially in the area of trauma and abuse and wonder and joy. What would Sophia Loren do? Why me? My parents. They went to the Italian movies. And I remember seeing Sophia Loren. Now there's a lady. I wouldn't mind looking like her. Troppo decolleté. There are volumes that I could say about my daughter, Regina. From childhood to the present, I so admire the stories that she chooses to bring to the world involving some risks personally making the documentary what would sophia loren do one of the joys of my life i'll always be a champion of you i love you and congratulations you're the best and i'm so proud of you with all of my love nicholas i'm really grateful to have you in my life i love you so much you know how much i love you been my good buddy for so many years. Being with my daughter is my ultimate joy. Blessings. There is a world under the earth. It holds the consciousness of nature's connection to all living things. It's a connection to those that came before us and those that are going to come after us. Life is not easy, it's hard. Think about it. We're shortchanging voices that are urgently needed in public forums. The system should be more accountable. We felt utterly powerless. All it takes is focus, dedication, and commitment. The media can be an instrument of change. It can awaken people. It's called regeneration. Media creates consciousness. He was radical. My being on the program was a statement for Fred. What is it you don't let people see? There's a lot of victim blaming. The message is clear. You're not going to win. Maya was a writer. I read those words and thought, somebody knows who I am. I rise! She's a civil rights hero. You had this ambience all around you that you could really change the world.
One of the joys in life is about who we meet along the way. Women cannot be written out of history. I knew what I had to do. I'm going to tell what happened to me. You can't change or fix what happened to one person. What you can change is what might happen to someone else. I won't give up, and neither should you. We can change everything. There's hope. What a thrill and joy it is to have the privilege to present this award to the inimitable, remarkable, extraordinarily stella, stellar Regina Scully. What, sweetie? <laughs> oh, sweetie. What's so ex exceptional about Regina is that I could have strung together another 10 superlatives and still not have been hyperbolic. I don't think there's many people you can say that about. We all honestly are truly in the presence of grace and goodness incarnate. Regina is truly the best that humanity has to offer. She single-handedly transformed the unscripted documentary and doc series landscape, providing capital and vision to shepherd over 250 films into being. The 200 they mentioned there, she gave additionally to films that she didn't take credit for. Okay, she's given anonymously. This was not only an invaluable boon to our culture, but it also gave thousands of voices the ability to be seen and heard that would not have been otherwise, both in front of and behind the camera, transforming not only the hearts and minds of generations, but also acting as a seedling and catalyst to forge an entire ecosystem of filmmakers who would never have otherwise had the chance to enter the field. And this she did with, utter, with a complete and utter selflessness, grace, and compassion, signing all of her emails with XO. Who does that? I just had met her. I mean, I, I just met this woman and she starts sending me XOXO. R Regina does. Regina has taken her pain and privilege and used it to spread love and empowerment. And she is fierce. She does not flinch in the face of adversity. She does not bow to power, and she does not shy away from the messy and uncomfortable, as many or most with her means all too often do. She is honestly in a category and class all of her own. And I'm going to tell one anecdote, just one, and also that, that end reel of her films, that's like point. 2%, I'm bad at math, of all the magical films that she alone single-handedly, I, I, don't, I don't even know what a parallel is to any industry. <laughs> but the anecdote I'll tell you is this, because not only does she do film, but I met Regina, she funded The Invisible War, which was in 2010, it was a film about the sexual assault in the military. And we could not, even though my filmmaking partner and I had had a pretty good track record at that point. We could not get funding from this film from anywhere because it was about women who'd been assaulted in the military. And what we were told by everybody was, no one wants to hear women's films. This is 2010. No one wants to hear films about women being raped. And no one certainly wants to hear about films be about women being raped in the military. I had the good fortune to meet Regina. I showed her some clips. She looked at me and she said, we're making this film and we're going to Sundance. The film goes to Sundance, Regina watches the film, and she calls me up, and she says, we need to do more. And I said, what? And she said, 
all those women who spoke to you in the film, we need to offer them therapy. They've gone through a traumatic experience. And so she said, and so she said, I want to fund. And I said, well, there's no real protocol yet because military sexual assault is kind of unique and you know, they, they haven't really figured out how to even, and she said, well, let's develop the protocol. So we found a Stanford researcher. I mean, and she, a million dollars she gave for us to do this pilot program, which today is now used on a therapeutic base for military sexual assault survivors. Never would have existed otherwise. This is not on Regina's resume. This is not anything she took credit for. And all her vision. And she does that not just for one film, but for dozens of films on and on and on. So we all are in the fortune of being in her presence. I won the lottery the day I met her, and she, the world won the lottery the day she was born. Regina, it's my absolute honor to present you with this award. Thank you for being such a beacon, inspiration, and role model for us all. I thought only my mother could say those things about me, <laughs> my Italian mother. Um, Amy, thank you so much. That's a lot to take in. Um, I'm, so, I'm so proud to be here and to be in this uh, theater with so many accomplished people who've done a lot to raise the bar for women all across the board. Um, Anne Margaret, Loretta Devine, you know, we're standing on your shoulders. So thank you so much. You deserve all the accolades. And so many of my colleagues are here. I, I just, I feel like my sacred circle is here. It just came out, rain, shine, doesn't matter. Thank you all for being here. I could name each and every one of you. And uh, I love how Amy described what we put back into our culture. And I actually don't do that all alone. I do it with colleagues. Uh, like all of you in these 10 rows right here. I couldn't do, have done it without you. You're all extraordinary. And, you know, I named our foundation Artemis Rising Foundation after the goddess Artemis because she is the goddess of fierce compassion. And in particular, she's the protector of women and children and animals. So she just resonated for me. And I do believe that there's nothing that any of us really can accomplish when we are fiercely compassionate. I don't mean just caring about something. I mean like we can't eat, sleep, or really feel good about being in the world unless we do something about it. And so that is usually the types of projects that we take on. And um, I call them DNA changers. So when you watch our films, I can promise you, you won't be the same person you were before you saw them your molecular, the cells in your body will be different and your mindset will be different and that's what it's all about. It's our stories that open our heart and that's why I'm proud to be in this business of storytelling. I think it's one of the greatest ways that we can eradicate shame, denial and silence because the only way that really people, that can really block people from healing is through those three things and when we tell our stories those things dissipate instantly quite quite frankly. And so for me, the real superpowers for, for any one of us is, you know, love, and kindness, and compassion. I just think there's nothing that we can't do without accomplishing those things. And thank you, Women Image Network. Phyllis Stewart, I think you've done an extraordinary job. This is no easy feat. Thank you. And I'm just so honored to be here. Thank you, everybody. And I hope you get to watch our films. Gina. And what sign is she? She's an Aquarius, of course. There are so many nice things being said about people tonight. I feel like I'm in Canada. I really do. There's no all-male award show where people are saying this many nice things. I'm just telling you. 